Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today we'll do another uh, post Basel video, if you will. Uh, last time I showed you two squalomatic colors that came out, uh, and today I'm going to show you a couple of new Red Star watches. Uh, this was this was probably the watch that got the most comments in my Basel wrap-up video uh, that I did uh, last month after I got back. This is the one that most people said, "Wow, that's you know, it's really a standout," and that was really my opinion the, the moment i saw the watches i said oh my goodness you know kind of like, where you where have you been my whole life uh these look really cool and, and just as a, a quick little a teaser um, i got this moon phase chrono and then i have this one which is it looks like a chrono it's not it's a regular, you know, three-hand watch with power reserve meter and offset seconds, but it boasts a 72-hour power reserve, which is something that the affordable watch market, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think really has. Uh, so I thought those were really cool watches. There's a couple different variants of each one, and I'll show them to you on the table up close. Uh, the manufacturer is a company called Red Star. Uh, they are in China. I developed a relationship with these people uh, many years ago. I think it was 2012. I started uh, selling some of the watches. The watches use a combination of either seagull movements or... Um, that 72-hour power reserve movement is a uh, peacock movement. Uh, but they just bring together, you know, cool mechanics, great looks, and uh, certainly, you know, at the right price. Uh, and we'll get into pricing in a minute. Uh, I'll do my own wrist check, and then we'll uh, check out these really nifty watches. Today, I realized, you know, I'm wearing, like, I think what most people would consider a total dichotomy of watches. Uh, Submariner, pre-ceramic, I believe 2006 and Seiko 5 military. I mean, you know, low end of the price price spectrum, you know, and then for a lot of people, the high end of the price spectrum, but you know, as you seasoned people know, <laughs> this is nowhere near the high end. Uh, it's probably, you know, m mid end. Uh, but I just really, you know, both brands, in my opinion, deserve, you know, major recognition they're both making stuff in-house completely their own movements uh, obviously different degrees of quality control and everything else but still two real stalwarts in the uh watchmaking industry uh and that's you know just my opinion you might think i'm nuts to put these two on equal footing um <laughs> but uh perhaps i am anyway uh let's go over the table and uh, check out these uh, red star watches in front of you here, I have four Red Star watches. It's two different styles, and each style comes in two different colors, at least for now. I've got these mechanical moon phase chronographs, uh, this back one here, and this front one here, and then I've got these two large power reserve models, 72-hour uh, power reserve models. So I'm going to start with the one in the foreground, pick it up, and we'll uh, go through the usual. So as I mentioned in the opening, all these watches come from company called Red Star in China uh, that I've been doing business with for a while. So this is a model number 7756G. I believe this is the D variant in color. It retails for around $349. It is a mechanical chronograph. So it's got these pushes for starting and stopping the chronograph. It has a date function at the top by that hand that spins around. It's on the 15th right now. And then at the bottom is a moon phase. You can see it kind of uh, disappearing behind the, the hump on the right. So first we'll go over the specs and then we'll actually get into the operation of the watch. It is a seagull movement uh, just like the ST19 movement except it has an added module for the moon phase and for the date of the week. It's a 22 joule mechanical wind-up movement. The watch itself is 40 millimeters in diameter from here to here. It is 15 millimeters thick. It's a, the dome of this acrylic crystal. It's an acrylic crystal. And tip to tip, the dimension from here to here is 48 millimeters. Obviously has an exhibition case back to see the movement. Comes on a brown leather strap. Probably, you know, not the greatest kind of strap. You, you may want to swap this out. Uh, it, it does have a 20 millimeter lug. So you can swap it out for anything you might want. And the water resistance is minimal at 50 meters. So the watch itself has this vintage kind of ivory dial. It's got green numbers. Uh, the green obviously comes from luminescence, but it, it's meant to look vintage-y. And it does, it does have uh, luminescence. 
Here you can see the hand certainly have luminescence. The number is not the greatest, but the, the hand you can certainly see. The registers on the dial are, are like a regular chronograph. On the far left, we have running seconds. So this is running all the time, uh, whether the chronograph is engaged or not. You would wind the watch with the crown over here, spinning it clockwise. You could hear it. You can hear it winding. It's a it's a mechanical only hand wind. It's not an automatic. There's no rotor in the back, so it has about a 40 hour power reserve. So you would have to wind this about every day to day and a half to keep it running. Uh, to operate the watch, we'll talk about the chronograph first. You push this button at the top, and there goes the running chronograph seconds. Uh, the movement beats at 21,600 beats per hour so this hand is ticking around three times a second. Elapsed minutes for the chronograph are here at the subdial on the right. So this is a 30 minute chronograph counter. After 30 minutes it just keeps going around so you really can't record anything longer than 30 minutes. I'm gonna, you stop it with the same button and then you reset with the bottom right button and it snaps back it snaps back to where it was. I'm just gonna run the chrono again just to get the chrono seconds hand out of the way. Uh, the Date is shown through this little hand up here. You know, they could have gone with a date window, uh, but I actually like that they put the date on a wheel. Maybe, maybe it's not the easiest to read, but the dial, it makes the dial balanced, you know, vertically as well as horizontally. Uh, so this is a 31-day, uh, excuse me, a 31-date wheel. So for a couple times out of the month, you're going to have to adjust the date. So how do you adjust the date? Well, if you look on the side here at this hammered finish, which we'll get into shortly, there's a hidden button up here. If you depress that button with either a strap changing tool or a ballpoint pen, which actually maybe is a, is a smarter idea so you don't scratch it, uh, you'll index that uh, one time every time you push it. So just like setting, you know, changing the date on a regular analog watch, you do have to change the date on this a couple of times a year. The standout here for me and for most people would be the moon phase. So this keeps track of the phase of the moon. It's easy to set. It's got another hidden button over here. So either you can look at a calendar, see when the last full moon was locally for you. Then you would set this to have a full moon on that day and then count how many days have gone since then and depress this button that many times. So if a full moon was six days ago, you press this button repeatedly until the moon is fully exposed between the two humps. I'll demonstrate. You push and you see every time it's clicking away. So there's a full moon. So let's say this date was uh, six days ago. So now you'd go and just advance the, the button six times. And so that is your correct moon phase now. Uh, it's really cool. It works well. The moon phases are very difficult to implement on mechanical watches. Why? Well, the moon revolves once around the Earth around every 27.3 days. But the moon phase is not. The moon phase relies, depends the moon, on the moon's position, the Earth's position, the sun's position. So the moon phase averages out to, in the long run to be about every 29 and a half days is when the phases repeat. Very difficult to implement mechanically because the numbers just don't divide evenly. Uh, so this is a 30 click moon and the cycle is actually about 29 and a half days. It does change all the time, uh, but like I said, it averages out to be about 29 and a half. So this would be off by half a day every month. So pretty much what's, I guess, convenient about it is that when you have to change the date for your month that don't have 31 days, you can just adjust the moon phase at the same time. And it's, as you can see, it's very quick. Uh, so if you want to adjust it, you know, every, it's going to be off about, like I said, a, a day every two months. And a day in moon phase terms isn't that much. Two days maybe is, is, is probably noticeable. Uh, so maybe every four months, you certainly have to adjust the moon phase. But that's how you adjust the moon phase. Uh, there, to get a, a true mechanical watch that really gets the moon down much better than that, you have to spend a decent amount of uh, more money. Uh, a quartz watch does it fairly decently uh, because it's controlled, obviously, by motors and, and quartz crystals, so we can do that with much more accuracy. But in the mechanical department, uh, it is tough to do, and, and, and that's, you know, that's why it's kind of a simple mechanism, but it's different. It's nice. The moon phase, you know, how many watches do you see that you know, tell the phase of the moon? There are not many. And what this reminds me of is years ago, you know, you probably heard a company called Poljot, P-O-L-J-O-T. They had the chronograph movement, the 3133, which was a two-eye chronograph, just like the Seagull ST19 uh, movement. They took that movement 
and they added moon phase to it and then that just became a 31679 or a 31681 i believe so that's all seagulls done is they've just added a module for the date it's still pretty much the same base chronograph movement and let's get into just quickly the case design itself so as i mentioned before it's a vintage case it's distressed um, and you can see that around the areas where there's tight radii it's tough to be distressed with things meet so you can see that's where some of the you know manufacturing techniques i would say you know don't pull through completely um, like under these hidden buttons you can see it's still a little bit shiny but on the whole it's really a nice looking watch it has a, a great great vintage feel i love the hammered appearance you know so, you know more so that you don't have to worry about getting your first scratch on the watch because it's already got a whole bunch of them the crystal is uh acrylic and the back is mineral the see-through back it's a screw down case back so this watch comes in this variant and then it comes in what i call this hammered dial variant i don't know what the real name is it's like an anthracite but it's like a, it reminds me of a piece of uh, sheet metal that's been hammered to give it, you know, some kind of a shape or to give it some kind of texture. And it just looks really nice. Really good looking. Dial's really nice and textured. You can see at the end it domes down a little bit. Just really well done. Again, very vintagey, very vintage feel. I didn't give you a close-up of the dial. The cream one again, I'm sorry. Here's the cream one just so you can really see. Just the detail. The blue hands, the subdials being depressed a little bit. Just a really nice looking watch, you know, for 350 bucks, a mechanical chrono with a moon phase. Uh, you know, n not really heard of, you know, kind of non existent, uh, in my opinion. So moving on, we come to model 7799G. I believe this dial color is the A variant, this silverish dial with the blue hands and the blue accents. So what is different about this watch? It looks like a chronograph. It is not a chronograph. This is a 70-hour or, or three-day power reserve watch. It is powered by, I, I apologize for the pronunciation, I believe it's Liaoning uh, Peacock Movement, the SL6601. It's a 31-joule automatic self-winding movement. And there you can see it in all its glory. Actually, very, it's actually very well finished for a three hundred and forty-nine dollar watch. The same price as the other one. You know, th this adds an automatic, uh, and you can see that tremendous rotor for turning the mainspring. I mean, that's that's probably why the rotor is so big. They have to power that spring. Seventy hours reserve. I don't know if you can see that. It's engraved on the plates. Regulation notes, everything. Not, uh, co regulation annotations. Excuse me. 31 jewel sapphire crystal on the front and on the back so it's not even it's a mineral crystal it's sapphire front and back which is really cool so size specs 44 millimeters in diameter 16 thick to this uh, slightly dome sapphire crystal and then that tip to tip is 54 millimeters comes on a, a nicer strap than the other watch in in my opinion it's this black alligator grain strap and it's got a cool Deployant buckle matches the distressed finish of the case with the star logo on it again. So this is one of those buckles that act like a bracelet. So you don't have to worry about the uh, strap getting all ratty at the end from constantly bending it and unbending it. So let's talk about the watch itself. It is a hand winding automatic. So you can wind it by hand. When you go to set the time by pulling the crown out, it hacks. You can see the seconds hand stopped. I should mention the other watch I showed you just a minute ago with the moon phase that did not hack. Obviously, only hand wound because it was because it was not an automatic. Has a date display down here. Seventy hour power reserve is clearly displayed on the dial. So on the left here is running seconds. Let's push the crown back in so it starts running. And on the right here, that's the power reserve. So when you get to the red, it's low. And when you come all the way up here, that means it's fully wound. You see the, the needle moving. So it will wind either with your hand or through wearing it. The power reserve will continue to build up uh, it is 50 meters water resistant give you the whole once over like i said it's got that same distressed case and then instead of the cream colored dialogue head before this is more of a it's tough to get in the camera it probably will look better on screen than it does through the viewfinder but it's this textured dial a silver textured dial see the applied indices really looks great 
It does have loom dots around the periphery, but true to form of companies doing things to watches I'll never understand, the hands aren't loomed. So it really makes no sense. Perhaps it's just for a visual adornment, uh, but it obviously it does nothing since having static dots loomed on the dial you know, will mean nothing to you. Uh, so let's get into really quickly, why is 70 hours such a, you know, a breakthrough, quote unquote? Well, for a low cost watch, it's a major breakthrough. Obviously, we saw recently I did the spring drive. That was a 72 hour power reserve. Uh, to make a mainspring that holds for 70 hours is not hard. It's actually, you know, it's simple. You would just, you know, like Jaws, we need a bigger boat for watches. We need a bigger spring. And you do need a bigger spring. But the problem is the springs get bigger and bigger and coil up more and more and more. When they want to uncoil, their torque curve changes dramatically uh, over the time of unwinding. And as that torque curve changes, that changes the accuracy of the watch. So to make a watch that's accurate and with a bigger spring is very difficult. Uh, if you look to some of the you know, better known watchmakers that make uh, seven and eight day reserve watches. I mean, they are super expensive watches. And most of the technology there is is torque control, how to how to keep the barrel unwinding and keep it at a constant torque so that the movement doesn't speed up or slow down erratically. Oh, I should mention, this is a 28,800 beats per hour watch. So it will tick around four times per second. So it's actually, you can see that small hand, it's very fluid. You can really see the dial um, texture now. Quite nice. So this was uh, around the same price as the other one, three forty nine. Like I said, this is model seventy seven ninety nine G. I believe this was the A variant. And then I have another one here, and I'll just show it quickly for comparison's sake. Same watch. It just has gold complements for the uh, applied indices and the and the date frame. But other than that, it's the same watch. Same distressed case. This one comes in a brown leather strap now. I don't know if I mentioned the lugs. This guy is a 22 millimeter lug. So if you're not in love with this strap, you can do whatever you want. 22 on this one, 20 on the other, 20 and 22. We carry tons of straps, uh, many options. So the first one up is that mechanical chronograph moon phase at 40 millimeters in diameter. So it's a great fit for my six and three quarter inch wrist. It lies very, very well. Obviously, there's really no concern about size here. This will fit a extremely wide variety of wrists uh, without a concern. And then the next one up is that 72 hour power reserve with the peacock movement. It's a much larger watch. You know, on my wrist, uh, the lugs aren't exactly overhanging, but the face of the watch is big. I do wear large watches, so Maybe I'd give this one a whirl, but it probably is bordering, bordering on uh, too large for me. Especially since in a watch like this, you'll note that there's no bezel to speak of. There's no dive bezel. Uh, so the crystal really is almost as big as the watch, which gives it, you know, like that pilot's watch appearance where it's, it's bigger than its size uh, portrays it to be. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, showing you some of our new releases from a company called Red Star. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.